live, live, live. We're on the air. Okay, we're live. Hey, how are you doing, everybody? How's it going today? It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. How are you guys? What a day I've had today. Oh, my goodness. I have been going nonstop since first thing this morning, and it's just not ending. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with everything. I hope you guys are having an okay day today. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's one day at a time, and oh my goodness, one story at a time. And today's story is the same story that I've been covering now for a couple of days. I thought I was the only one paying attention to this story, but now, oh no, I'm not alone anymore. Oh no, 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 there are people watching. I'm talking about the Norwegian Sun cruise ship, the cruise from hell that I refer to uh, about, what, three, four days ago I started talking about it, going through the Panama Canal uh, from Miami to... Uh, Los Angeles, and uh, uh, surprise, surprise, it's a construction cruise. Oh no, uh, it's not a uh, it's not a dream cruise. Oh no, oh no, is it a relaxing getaway, tropical uh, weather type thing? No, 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 it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare from Elm Street Cruise. Uh, I've talked to you about it already a little bit. I'll tell you some more about it. I I just can't believe it. It's this this uh, this reporting that's coming out from all over the place. Uh, it's now making the news in Australia. It's now making the news. Um, it's already made the news in Canada. It's making the news on. Uh, so apparently, I think some Fox stations might start to be start to be might start pick up. Oh, if I could just talk. If I could just talk. Oh, I think some Fox news stations are going to start to pick up the story. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Got it out. Oh gosh. Anyway, uh, I have been busy today. Uh, I've been on Facebook uh, half the day today. Usually I'm not on Facebook very much, but I've been on Facebook today. Uh, and it's just been insane. Um, I've been I've been following this group on Facebook that uh, uh, it's a bunch of passengers that were on the ship and they're uh, they're uh, gathering up, you know, their evidence. They've got photos, videos, uh, you name it. And uh, I wrote to them today and I told them, you know, what I do. I have a YouTube channel and, and I like to, you know, I've been exposing the story on, on my channel. Uh, I'd like to do another video today because there's more updates. Uh, do you mind if I, you know, can I use any of you, anyone's photos? And they just wrote back, oh, use all our photos. Go ahead. Just, just tell the world about this thing. So I put a video together today and uh, it's just, just going. A lot of you have probably already seen it because a lot of you kind of keep an eye on me now. <laughs> you kind of watch what I'm up to. And a lot of you are subscribers of mine, and you have that uh, alert icon, so uh, that's good to know. Uh, so let me, first of all, let me just say also, I've also invited uh, all the folks from the YouTube page, uh, from that YouTube page, to to come on over uh, and and watch today's show. Uh, please sign in and say hi. Uh, I'd love to talk to you guys about what happened to you. Um, I'm hearing more details, uh, not only at this cruise, the cruise before this cruise, there was construction going on too. Yeah, they were doing construction on the cruise before this cruise. Uh, that's two cruises before the dry dock. Oh my goodness! And there are problems there. I, 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 unbelievable. I tell you, the story is just, just, just growing out. It's unreal. Um, so first of all, I uh, want to welcome all my regulars back as usual because I know I have a diehard core of followers that follow me almost every show. Thank you. I'm on Monday to Friday, as you folks know, 5 o'clock Eastern. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do two shows, uh, 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock. And today, I'll be doing a second show at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I had a bunch of trivia prepared, and uh, hopefully we'll do trivia tonight. Uh, so if any of you love tra travel trivia, come on back at 8 tonight. Uh, but I'll be talking about updates anyway as we go. For those of you who are here who have never been here before, uh, I'm Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Let me take off my glasses and formally introduce myself. Uh, I'm from Creston, British Columbia in Canada. I am three miles north of the Idaho border. I usually can see America right out my living room window right over here. Uh, but today I can't because <laughs> we've got rain and fog and clouds and uh, we're kind of socked in. So it's kind of like what we like to call yucky around here. We're about 35 degrees Fahrenheit today. It's kind of a so-so day here. And uh, I just can't, uh, I just can't see Idaho just south of me. But um, when I do, it looks beautiful because I've got mountains all around. It's a pretty picture. Uh, but today, it's a typical kind of you know early spring type day, and it's. Yeesh. I love talking about cruise ships. I talk about cruise ships all the time. Cruise lines, deals. Uh, my viewers and I, uh, my regulars are diehards. We love going on cruises. We compare notes with each other. 
Uh, I welcome new cruisers to my channel every day who've never been on a cruise before or thinking of going on a cruise. Or I welcome people to my channel that uh, were on a cruise like 10, 15 years ago but haven't been on one for a long time. Uh, boy, have things changed uh, in 10, 15 years. Unbelievably changed. And uh, it's a good idea to catch up with this channel if you can, because we like keeping up on what's going on. I'm on six days a week, live on YouTube. I'm the only YouTuber talking about cruise ship vacations that does this. I am not a travel agent. I am not paid by the cruise lines to be on here. I'm not employed by anyone connected with the cruise business. I am my own guy. My opinions are mine. And I love to talk to my viewers about what's going on out there. And lately, We've been talking about all kinds of crazy stuff. A month ago, we were talking about the fist fights going on in the Carnival Liberty cruise ship down in Australia. That family of 23 crazy people who got kicked off the ship, but it only took Carnival, what, nine days to kick them off on a 10-day cruise? And they only offered a 25% discount on the future cruise with all that terror going on that ship. That's still up in the air. I don't know what's going on with that. That was crazy. First, we talked about that. Then we talked about all the new ships that are coming. Then we started talking about the MSC Seaside and the poop smell on the MSC Seaside and the lousy service and the uh, uh, elevators that are down and the spas that aren't working and the lousy food in the buffet and the entertainment that seems to be off the, off the, off the. Uh, And then I got accused by people saying, oh, you're employed by Royal Caribbean. You're trying to slam MSC. Yeah, <laughs> that's not my style. Uh, and now here we are talking about Norwegian Cruise Lines. Uh, I love Norwegian Cruise Lines. I've been a, I've been a cruiser on Norwegian Cruise Lines. You see this little card right over here? See that? Let me just kind of move out of the way. Bring that. That's my little. That's my card from the Epic. I was on the Epic a couple of years ago with my wife. The ship was it was okay. I mean, I had some likes and dislikes about the Epic. It's not like it was all peaches and cream. But you know what? We didn't have. Let's see if it'll stay there. We didn't have construction crews on the Norwegian Epic with all kinds of toxic uh, chemicals and jackhammers and sanders and guys wearing what looked like hazmat suits on our cruise. At least I didn't have that. Uh, I may have had a couple of beefs, but nothing that crazy. But oh my goodness, this cruise here, this cruise, I, I tell you, I covered the, the Norwegian Sun four or five days ago, and I was talking about the fact that the ship was going to dry dock. I hadn't heard anything yet about the adventures prior to the ship going to dry dock. I was just talking about the ship going to dry dock. And I was telling my viewers, oh, yeah, well, it's going to dry dock. And the company says, upon refurbishment, the ship will be redeployed back to Port Canaveral and will start a series of three and four-day cruises, three-day cruises to the Bahamas, four-day cruises to Cuba, to Havana. And I talked about how outrageously expensive this was going to be because <laughs> they were offering a drink package as basically it's a mandatory drink package. You book the cruise and you get the drink package whether you want it or not. And if one of you is an, uh, is an enjoyer, one who likes a libation or two, and the other one is a teetotaler, tough beans. You pay the price they're asking now because it's a booze cruise to the Bahamas for three days. What do you think a three-night cruise is? A relaxing family vacay? No, it's a booze run. And the one to uh, uh, Havana, the four-day cruise, is, I think, a money grab. I think that they're they're soaking the passengers upwards of 250 bucks a night on a 25-year-old cruise ship that just got renovated a little bit, doesn't have all the fancy, uh, dancy uh, amenities of the new ships, and they're charging prices that you would pay for a Viking cruise uh, with only 930 passengers uh, and inclusive everything. Um, so I was worried. That's, that was my show five days ago or four days ago, I, and I thought that was the extent of it. <laughs> Wrong! Then I find out this, this story, and I had read something about this, but I didn't follow it up, and I'm kicking myself. I should have covered the story a day earlier, uh, but it didn't, it didn't click in, and now it has clicked in, and oh, man, I am digging up information about what's going on here with this cruise, uh, what happened here, uh, and now I'm finding uh, today uh, what happened uh, with respect to uh, the cruise prior to this cruise. More construction was going on. I, I, What's with what's going on with Norwegian? What what are they up to? What what's happening in the management office up there? Is someone brain dead? More than one person can't be one. It can't be one person that's brain dead. It's got to be an entire group of people. Or there's a dictator up there, and everyone else is scared. You know what? 
they're scared to even blink and oppose this person because they're going to get fired. Something's up and it's going to cost them. It's going to cost Norwegian uh, dearly with respect to the reputation uh, in PR and everything else. I am just shocked at what's been going on. By the way, why am I looking over here all the time? Why is he looking over here? I have a tablet here with a bunch of photos I'm going to show you about the show. I got more photos uh, and I was just setting it up. I'm trying to multitask here because I've been so busy today. Um, so for those of you who are new, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I hope uh, some of you, I'm praying that some of the passengers who were on this cruise are joining us today. I've invited the whole group, anyone from the group to come on down here and join my live stream and just just say hi. Just just type in there. Tell us, where are you watching me from? What's your high temperature today? Tell us if you're on the cruise or not. Uh, my gang will welcome you with open arms, and we're dying to know what's going on. Uh, uh, it's unbelievable. The comments I'm getting on my, my page, I'd say 95% are extremely positive uh, and, and are on your side on this whole matter. Uh, we are shocked and outraged and just fed up with what we're hearing and it's just getting it's getting us angry it's getting us kind of testy so yeah that's what's going on um first thing i'm going to do right now is say hi to everybody who signed in because this is what i do here i interact with my viewers on this chat and um and say hi to everybody they say hi to me and they'll say hi to you the first person to say hi to me said hi to me at 4 31 even though i went on the air at five o'clock it was jim thomas saying good afternoon everybody 63 and cloudy here in anderson california jim you're number one today you're the first one here welcome buddy pamela jordan hi bruce and everyone sunny 66 degrees fahrenheit here in iva south carolina wes morrison sends me a two dollar 99 cent super chat look at that He's sending me money at, uh, I don't even know what time this is. It looks like, what, what, what 4.30? Thank you very much. He's saying treat yourself to some caffeine-free diet Coke. Well, look at that. I got some caffeine-free diet Coke right here. This is USA brand, by the way, for any Canadians out there who are watching. This is the American version of the product from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, uh, Safeway store. Uh, delicious. Uh, I don't mind the Canadian version either, but it was on sale. <laughs> what are you going to do? Ignore a sale? Come on. Cheers. Cheers to all. Um, best wishes to everyone. Uh, thank you, Wes, very much. That'll help get me another case of cola. Uh, I, Iskew Park, hi, Bruce, and my fellow uh, subbers. It's three below Celsius and sunny here in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Uh, Jim Thomas, watch the video and pictures you did on the construction cruise. Those poor people got the short end of the stick. Yeah, uh, they got taken for a ride of, what, 16 days? Ridiculous, outrageous. Uh, should never have happened. Iskew Park companies like the Sun owners need to be hit where it hurts. A boycott of all of their ships and a refusal by all travel agents not to sell any cabins till they get a 100% refund. And it's the travel agents that have the power that if they were to band together and slap those guys, give them like a dope slap, like a little wake up, maybe that'll help because uh, this is terrible. Bob Hollis, hi, Bruce, and everyone. Sunny 65 uh, in Atlanta today. And then Bob Hollis follows up that little message. With this little message, he sends me a little green bar here, a super chat of $5, and he says down here, I don't know if you can read this, but it says, for diesel fuel for that big-ass RV. <laughs> now, folks, I, I have to confess. <laughs> I, have to, I have to clarify this. Uh, any of those of you who are new and have never been here before or not aware of what's going on, <laughs> I'm on the air Monday to Saturday. I, I tell this all the time. I tell this to everybody. I'm on the air Monday to Saturday. But. This past Sunday, I was on the air. I I I, I plan. I didn't plan it. It just happened. I was sitting here with about oh, it was around noon, uh, noon time or so, and all of a sudden, a, a a a flash came into my mind, and I thought, oh my goodness, I've got a story to tell, and what a perfect day to tell a story because after all, it's Sunday, April the first, April Fool's Day. I mean, it's the day of stories, don't you think? That's the perfect day to tell a story. And I came up with a doozy. And I dropped a, a fast video. I went live on YouTube unannounced. I just popped up in 30 minutes. I, I did my work to set up the live stream, put on a shirt, kind of did my hair a little, not what there is of it. You know, there's not much here. And I dropped a story about a couple <laughs> wanting to move to Creston, where I am thinking they were going to buy the house next door, which is for sale. This is true. The house for sale is next door. I'm not lying about that. Uh, but they didn't like it uh, as much. And the wife saw my house. <laughs> I said to the realtor, hey, you think that guy might sell his house? That's a nice looking house. 
And the realtor got a phone, got the phone number from my neighbor, called me. I made all this up and uh, told me about this couple. And it's an RV dealer from nearby Calgary, Alberta, about a five hour driveway. Wants to open up a dealership here. It's all a lie. All a lie. And uh, oh, I just strung everybody along. I, I did this story for an hour. I had the couple come over, look at the house. They dropped, they drove their RV over here. It was sitting in front of my house. I loved it. And we made a deal. We made a deal to sell the house with all the furniture. And we did a swap for the RV and a bunch of cash. I was going to be on the road. I was going to be traveling with Bruce in an RV. And I'm going to drive to cruise ports all over North America. Is that a great story or what? I think that's fantastic. Well, a whole bunch of people fell for it. <laughs> And they didn't watch the last 10 minutes of the video because if you had watched the last 10 minutes of the video, you would have seen me fess up to the fact that it's an April Fool's joke. <laughs> I had a whole bunch of comments. My, my daughter in Calgary received phone calls over the next two days of congratulations. Congratulations on your parents' new adventures. My daughter's going, what are you talking about? She had no idea. She doesn't watch my channel very often. She didn't know I did that. April 1st, <laughs> April Fool's video, but I did. And she she called my wife, who I refer to as the Jennifer Aniston lookalike. Like. So, you know, Jen. So they, she called Jen. My wife's name isn't Jen, but that's what I said. Uh, my wife's going, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, congratulations. I, I got friends of mine calling me. To, what, what, what aren't you telling me? What, what are you two doing that you're not telling me? And my wife, Jennifer, is going, what are you talking about? And so that's when she found out what the daughter has been getting phone calls about. Because <laughs> these folks didn't watch the last 10 minutes of the video. They watched the first half, thought they got the story, and off they went. <laughs> so Bob Hollis is sending me $5 gas money for that big ass RV I got outside that I swapped my house for. But thank you, Bob, for the $5. <laughs> I love it. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I need it. Uh, I'm not monetized by YouTube these days. But I'm not mad. I'm not angry at YouTube that I'm not monetized. I'm a little frustrated, of course. You know, I haven't been monetized now since the 20th of February because of the changes in the rules. But I'll be monetized eventually, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay right here, and I'm very happy, and everything's fine. Others not so not so happy. Very sad story out of YouTube the other day, but everything's okay here. Thank you for the contribution on the super chat. Um, Let's see who else is here. Peter Heckema. Hi, Bruce. A beautiful 85 degrees in Tarpon Springs, Florida today. Watching you poolside with my feet in the water and a cold drink in my hand. What could be better than that? You know, what, what could be better than that? Watching Bruce in 35 degree crested, freezing his tushy off, <laughs> making up stories about getting an RV and heading down on the road. That's what he's. Yeah. Oh, Peter, you killed me. <laughs> Iskew Park, just seen another cruise blogger called Don's Family Vacations put a real nasty post on the events on the sun. Yeah, Don Don's uh, Family Vacation, he's a travel agent. He's in Edmonton in, in Canada here, and he does a couple of videos, about two or three a week, talks about different stuff. Uh, we've talked a little bit. We've, we've communicated a bit by email back and forth. I'd love to do a, like, a, like a, a live stream with him. Like I'd like to do a, you know one of those. Someday, we, maybe we can work together on something. But yeah, he's working on it. Uh, Stargazer, hi, everyone. 55 in Kentucky. How you doing, Stargazer? Uh, Bob Hollis is here. Debbie Emanuel, hi, Bruce and everyone. Cloudy and preparing for storm for the next few days in Chico. High of 66 and 86 days till the bliss. <laughs> Counting down the days to get on the bliss. Iskew Park, maybe the next bright ideal will be leaving a hammer and a hard hat in each room. Or how about a hazmat suit and some gas masks? How about that? Those would make some nice selfies. Unbelievable what's going on on that ship. Richard Kormaski, 42 in Philly. Please, no more sun discussions. Please, I've had enough. Richard, we haven't had enough. We have to have more. We have to tell the truth here. We have to let the world know what's going on. Steve Bartley at the Masters. Sergio Garcia had an eight over par on one hole. Oh, five balls in the water. I know what that's like. I've done that. But I don't have the money Sergio has. I can't afford to lose five golf balls. <laughs> I fish them out. I don't know about Sergio. But I fish my golf balls out if I can't, or other people's. Oh, my dead boy, Debbie. Sorry, Richard, changed the channel. Uh, Sebastian <laughs> is here. Hi, Bruce. No more MSC Seaside. Please, no, no more MSC Seaside. You've been killing us with the Seaside. It's just been awful. Oh, the Seaside. My goodness. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, Richard, oh, I'd rather talk about the fight on the Aussie cruise. 
<laughs> yeah. Stargazer agreed, Debbie. The steaming Bean is here. Norwegian Cruise Line has become a victim of their own nickel and diming. Isn't maybe that's what it is? Maybe, Steaming Bean. Maybe you're right on that one. Deb Boy Debbie, Philadelphia. That's about the comment expected. Uh, Kathy Butler is here. Hi, everyone. Lots of feelings about the, Nash, uh, the uh, Norwegian Sun Cruise. I support the passengers in their fight. Those photos are astonishing. Tammy Ray is here. Hello, everyone. Hi, Tammy. Randy Lucas, greetings, Bruce, and all from the Dutch side of the island of St. Martin. He is reporting from a cruise ship. Today was hot and humid with a high of 88 degrees. Just woke up from a nap. That's right. You bet. I just woke up from a nap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's one thing for a, a, a viewer to take the time out of their busy holiday schedule to, you know, live stream, you know, to talk to us during a live stream from a cruise ship. It's a wonderful thing. But then to rub it in, you know, just to kind of to kind of get you, you know, oh, some people, you know. <laughs> Deb Boy, Debbie, Randy, good for you. John B is here. Hi, Bruce. Hi, John B. Tammy Ray, 15 below here in Calgary today. 15 below. Oh, my God. It's April the 5th. The, oh, yeah. Well, that's Calgary. That's yuck. Sea, uh, sea lid keeper. Sea keeper. Hi, Bruce. And all 82 degrees Fahrenheit in South Florida. Windy, but still pleasant. I like cruise ships. I am fond of the Norwegian sun. I grieve for the ship and all who sail on her. There you are. I tell you. I'm telling you. Kathy Butler, man, Peter Heckema knows how to watch the show. Poolside. <laughs> I want to watch Poolside one day. Laugh out loud, says Debbie. So, uh, Sylvia's here. Hi, Bruce and everyone. 57 degrees and sunny in Greensboro, North Carolina. How you doing, Sylvia? Kathy Butler, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for the super chat donations, Wes and Bob. Wednesday, Tom, Wendy Thompson. Hi, Bruce. Hi, everyone. It was 22 degrees temperature at 6 a.m., 60 degrees uh, plus here. NCL, this is bad press. People talk good and bad. They do. People, we talk about it all. Tammy Ray, although there has been uh, uh, some not-so-funny stuff lately, I still love cruising, and it's still my top form of holiday of choice. I'm with you. I love to cruise. You bet you. Jim Thomas. Sending me a $5 donation on Super Chat. There he is. Thank you, Jim Thomas. You are the man. Thank you. That is three to me. That's fantastic. A Deb Boy Debbie dictator, most likely. That's what it is. Yeah, there's a dictator running that thing. There's something going on over there. Sea Lid Keeper. Royal Caribbean doesn't need to badmouth MSC Seaside. Bruce is impartial and tells it like it is. MSC is uh, sawing the branch they are sitting on. Thumbs up for Bruce. Thank you, Sea Keeper. You guys are great. <laughs> I love your comment. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Kathy Butler, uh, Richard, uh, see, I wish I was. It, it was 42 weather. So hot down here in Florida already. 42 sounds refreshing. <laughs> Turn on the air conditioning, Kathy. Come on. You're killing us. Tommy Eaton uh, as Gomer, a.k.a. Jim Neighbors, would say, shame, shame, shame on Norwegian. Shame indeed. Shame indeed. Kathy Butler, good point, Tammy Ray. I think that's why people are so frustrated because this doesn't represent a true cruise experience, and it's not cheap. That's right. That was serious money that went uh, down the drain down there. Uh, Tommy Eaton, sunny and 70 in Jacksonville, Florida. Nice, Tommy. Kathy Butler, oh, no, I have never experienced anything below 20. I don't know what I do, laugh out loud. <laughs> uh, Bruce, your story, was, your story was so detailed. You must be great at poker. I'm not. I'm not that great at poker. I, I, I lose interest after a while. I, I like action. It's too slow for me. You know, sitting around, sitting around. After about an hour, I've had enough. <laughs> Love telling a story, though. Oh, uh, my goodness. Uh, Kathy saying, J thanks, Jim, for the super chat. Uh, Peter Heckema, the thing about your April Fool's joke is that you seem so excited. It just made it so believable. <laughs> well, I was getting excited about how good the story was going. <laughs> I just... I thought this is going really well. I, I'm not cracking up or anything. It's just, I'm just going along and I'm coming up with all kinds of tangents on this story. Oh, it was great. Uh, I loved it. Tammy Ray, you're a little too good at lying. Laugh out loud. <laughs> once a year. I, I get licensed to do this once a year. Bob Hollis, he had the details down pat. <laughs> Sylvia, I heard your April Fool's uh, was a joke. What? What a jokester. I heard about it, she says. Uh, Jim Thomas, you got me hook, line, and sinker. I was hoping that you were going to say YouTube had picked up your show and then you went sideways funny. <laughs> oh, I was going to I was gonna add a couple of chapters. I, if, if, if I looked at the time and I went, oh, geez, it's almost an hour. I better, you know, wrap this up. Because I was thinking I was going to start talking about MSC calling me, you know. <laughs> 
offering me some kind of an ambassadorship for their cruise line, you know, and maybe I could find a way to park my, my rig down in Florida, go on, uh, you know, a couple of MSC cruises in a row and, you know, do come reports. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, maybe next year I come up with something. Don't worry, folks. I'll come up with something. Uh, <laughs> Skew Park, how's that crap weather I sent your way for that April Fool's joke? Had enough? Huh? You had enough of that? Oh, man. Debbie Boy, Debbie, I think Don's in Ottawa. Uh, I don't know if that boy, if Don's in Ottawa. Kathy Butler, Don is super easy going, and even if he's miffed about it in today's video, uh, uh, that's Don's uh, family vacations guy. Seaside, uh, Iskew Park. Seaside is starting to look good after what happened on the sun. Oh, any any cruise ship looks better than what happened on the sun. I mean, whoa! I got stuff to I got stuff to tell you guys. It's unbelievable. Uh, Kathy, Randy, your cruise sounds amazing. Princess is a, a future must do for me. I love a good nap. Randy saying we love Princess. This is our twentieth cruise on Princess. Twentieth, Kathy, twentieth cruise. Oh my goodness. Desi Wagner, hi, Bruce, and all. Hi, Desi, hi to, uh, to everyone and all that. Uh, thanks, for, Ollie, for joining me today. Uh, yeah, I got to tell you, this this story about the sun, um, I was on, like I said, I, I was up uh, pretty early this morning and uh, taking a look at it, and, oh, uh, I went to that Facebook page uh, to take a peek at the, uh, you know, uh, uh, at the stories and the photos, and I got to tell you, guys, it is just, it is just uh, appalling uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's just appalling. Uh, I'm going to see if I can try to set this up for you. I hope you can see this. I'm just going to tinker here a little bit. Just bear with me. There we go. All right. And uh, mm, see if I can do this correct. Uh, okay. So what I have here are some pictures of the deck. You see that blue stuff there? See that? That's blue powder from the sanders that have been uh, ripping up the deck. Uh, and the workers using these machines are uh, using uh, masks. To protect, the, you know, inhaling this stuff. Not the passengers. They're not being given to this stuff. The passengers are lying next to the pool. Here's some more of this stuff right here on the stairs leading up to one of the decks. And here's here are photos. Uh, like I say, I'm doing the best I can showing you this. You know, where they cordon off with ropes and stuff. The entire walkway. Uh, it is just uh, appalling. The workers there. Uh, here uh, is is uh, someone taking a photo from the down to the pool area. But all along the top area there, it's all cordoned off. They're working on that whole area up there. Uh, the, the passengers have absolutely no protection. Here are these guys uh, uh, putting on this, uh, the, the, this, this uh, you know, water protective solvent. On the side of the cans that this stuff comes in are warning labels. Bad for the environment. <laughs> Bad uh, for expectant mothers. Do not expose this to any expectant mothers. Well, how do you know how many expectant mothers are on this cruise ship that are you know, a month pregnant, two months pregnant. Some of them probably don't even know they're pregnant. You don't know. It's crazy. Uh, here, this whole deck here has been cordoned off uh, with these workers. Look at all that stuff on the decks. Look at all that gunk. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's outrageous. This is not what you signed up for. A 16-day cruise? you got to be kidding me. They they blocked off and locked off emergency exits, the, the, the muster station exits. You know, to get to a lifeboat in case of an emergency? You, they lock that off. You can't get there. What happens if some of those containers, uh, you know, knock over? Uh, somehow someone is smoking a cigarette out there. You don't know. Catches fire. That stuff is highly flammable. The heat that it that the stuff gives off is dangerous. So the heat will kill you. Let alone the flames. You can't get your lifeboat. So now you're on the one side of the ship only. Half people get off. The other half don't. It's ridiculous. Blocked off. Emergency exits all over the place. Here we go. They're trying to say, uh, uh, you know, new sun horizon. We're, the beautification is in process. It's not beautiful for you, not the folks who pay top dollar to go on this cruise. It's going to be, you know, a month or two from now for the folks on the booze cruise and the ones going to Havana. They're going to have a beautiful ship to go on. But you folks who are paying top dollar, you get to see this crap. This is ridiculous. This uh, stairway here all blocked off. Uh, here, look at all that stuff on the board, the deck. Look at all this stuff. This stuff here. This is carcinogenic. This is poison, people. Here, this stuff here, there's a reason it's in locked drums. It ain't hand soap, okay? This is not, this isn't, you know, Nivea hand cream. Uh, no, bad, bad news. The warning labels on all this stuff, all the warning labels on this stuff. Uh, here's again, roped off, and you can see the sort of the before, the after. It's just bad, bad news. Uh, what was, uh, what were they, look at these warning labels here, flammable, don't, you, see that little asterisk, that's bad, okay, that, I don't know if you know what that means, 
It means bad, really bad stuff. It's everywhere. It was everywhere on this ship. Every container, they had it everywhere. I'm just showing you quickly these photos. I don't want to, I don't want to bore you because this is poor quality and I can't do much better than that. Uh, it's terrible. It, it's just terrible. And now, here's the other little ditty I found out today. The ship stops. Okay. The ship starts in Miami. Okay. They don't bring out this stuff until the second day when they're in international waters. International waters, no rules. Uh, that's when the construction gangs, the boys, they were downstairs. That's when they came up with their hazmat suits on and their masks and all this stuff. You notice also they had bandanas around their heads so that they wouldn't get the stuff in their hair. And uh, they started tearing the bejesus out of the various levels of the deck after they roped off all kinds of areas, including the kiddie pool area. Yeah, what do you do with your children now? You got like four days at sea before you get down there. And yeah, this is really great. Um, so then they tore the place apart, dust everywhere, you know, and jackhammers it going at all hours. There's a video here on YouTube from one of the posters who uh, is saying it's one in the morning and it's nonstop all hours because these guys who are on the ship, they got the orders. You got so many days, so many hours to get this job done. If you don't get the job done, there'll be penalties because that's how construction works. When you're on the so-called just-on-time construction method, you have penalties if you don't finish the job in time. So what do you care if it's two in the morning? They're not your customers. You're just a construction worker getting your 20 bucks an hour, or maybe you're getting your 10 bucks an hour. I'm not sure where these workers are. I'm assuming that they're allowed to be on board the deck because of US laws, but I don't think so. I have a feeling that these guys I bet you if U.S. Customs were checking them out, they probably found that these guys are called uh, cooks and uh, cleaners. Uh, but in reality, they're construction workers that were on board in Miami with the materials. And I got to think there's some U.S. law being contravened there. Some kind of building code, Florida building code, Florida state building laws, something might have been contravened here if these guys were not declared what they really are. What are they? deck the construction workers they're redoing the deck uh, th these aren't these aren't cooks these aren't these aren't laundry guys no they're construction workers they're brought in for this specific job uh anyway these guys were given direct orders from head office you've got so many hours so many days to get the job done why because when the ship went through the canal came up the west coast of uh of uh, north america uh, past costa rica and uh, uh you know guatemala mexico uh, it, just before, just before entering U.S. territorial waters, the ship ducked in to Ensenada. And what did it do in Ensenada? Dumped everything off. They unloaded all of the construction materials, all the look, the chemicals, all the pails, the buckets, everything, all dumped off. They just dumped it on the pier at Ensenada. Now, the rules in Mexico and the rules in California, you know they're not the same. There's not, there's not even, not even close to the same. So if a cruise ship wants to unload hazardous chemicals that are practically banned in most of the United States, especially California, where are you going to drop it off? Mexico, of course. You're going to drop it off Mexico because the rules are so lax. There's nothing to worry about. You can dump that stuff. Maybe you can even dump it down the sewer for all they care. I don't know. But it, that's exactly what happened. They dropped everything off in Ensenada. And when the ship came into Los Angeles, there's nothing to report here. Nothing to see here. No problems here. All is well. Uh, we have 2,000 passengers getting off a ship. We have 1,000 crew members here. Uh, ship's going to dry dock now in Victoria and into Canada. We're just here for like six hours to drop everybody off. And then we're going to go to Victoria. And that's exactly what they did. And they just slipped out of town went up the coast in international waters into Victoria, British Columbia, because you can't bring that crap into BC either. You can't bring that toxic shit into my country. Sorry for the language. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can bring a nice clean ship in there with a nice lovely looking deck on it and a whole bunch of people in LA coughing and wheezing and having blood. They're bleeding from the nose. Uh, they're having a bad persistent cough. They can't seem to shake. There's a number of people with issues, medical issues, who are now seeing their doctors and they're being sent in for x-rays and tests. What's wrong with my patient? Why is my patient bleeding from the nostril? 
a week and a half or so after a cruise. What, what, what happened to you? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what happened to them. This happened to them. And Norwegian is offering them a 25% uh, future credit on a cruise as so-called inconvenience compensation. That's all it is. It's an inconvenience. They haven't apologized. There's no word of apology anywhere in any of the corporate lingo. And I'll tell you why. The lawyers won't let them do it. Company lawyer will be caught dead letting these guys use the word use the word apology because you use that, you're opening yourself up to lawsuits. So there's no apology coming from Norwegian. There's no refund coming from Norwegian at this point in time because they think they can ride this thing out. They think they can just this this will just go away. It's, these 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 people will get tired. Uh, they'll they'll won't they won't pursue this much further. We'll ride this baby out. There's one more problem. There's one big problem coming up. Well, actually, there's two. The second problem actually is uh, the fact that there was a re there was a construction cruise on the same ship the week before the Panama cruise. Yeah, because I've seen uh, a passenger talking about the ship, the cruise that they were on, the Norwegian Sun, the week before the Panama cruise, and there were the chemicals on board on that cruise. And uh, the two passengers, the mother and the daughter, are both ill, and they've gone to their doctors. They, they've got medical issues because of this. And they've complained. They complained on board. They complained to the cruise line. They complained to the Coast Guard. They've complained. Nothing. Nothing. No one has responded. Nothing's happening. They didn't even get an offer of a refund of, a, of any kind of a credit. Only the folks on the Panama cruise got an offer. 25% on the value of your cruise. That's all you get. You have one year to use it. Otherwise, you lose it. Wow, that's great. How about the folks flying over from Ireland spending, what, $2,000 on airfare to come on over and uh, going on a cruise of a lifetime? Uh, where are they going to come up with another $2,000 of airfare and 75% of the cost of another cruise? To go on the same cruise line they were just poisoned on in the first place. What are you, nuts? They're not coming. Norwegian knows they're not coming. It's a bogus offer. They know no one's going to take that deal. They're playing, a, they're playing the game. They're, they're gambling going, bet you they won't pursue this much further. Guess what? Over 800 members on the chat site, or is it at least 600 anyway. Last I saw, 600 members on the chat site in less than a week. Uh, Norwegian's going to have themselves a problem. This is going to be a PR nightmare. I expect it to land eventually on CNN. It's going to be on Fox. It's going to be on MSNBC. It will hit the North American press. And North Americans, who are the number one cruisers in the world, are going to be exposed to this story. I only have so many subscribers that watch my channel. By the way, when I was on the air yesterday, I had 1,554 subscribers. Right now, 1,577. 23 overnight. A lot of them because of this story. They're jumping into the channel because they appreciate I'm mentioning it. I got one more little doozy for you guys. Um, this ship is taking its next cruise on April the 19th, two weeks from today. 14 days from now, that ship will be doing its first cruise since dry dock. Starts in Seattle, goes up to Victoria for a little day visit because it's Canada, another country. And then it heads south through the Panama Canal all the way up to Port Canaveral in Florida. Here's the deal. That's a sold out cruise. That cruise was sold out weeks, if not months ago. And those folks could possibly be getting on a construction cruise. Because if Norwegian is pulling a stunt like this on this, uh, this Panama Canal cruise, and the one before that, they're already pulling stunts like this on those two cruises, what do you think the odds are that the work being done on the ship won't be done in time? Not all of it. And they're still going to have construction people on board that cruise ship for the 18-day repositioning cruise from Seattle to Port Canaveral starting February the, was it the 19th, I said. Unbelievable. I, 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 I'm worried about the 2,000 innocent victims about to get on that ship. What's going to happen to them? Are they going to be exposed to all kinds of hazardous chemicals? Are they going to be exposed to a lot of workers on the inside of the ship doing a lot of the so-called painting touch-up type work? Are they still replacing ceiling panels that may have had asbestos issues from 20 years ago we don't know about? Or what about the ventilation systems that now for three weeks have been circulating the gunk 
that has already been permeating the ship that we're talking about now, the stuff now that's on that ship. What about the next two weeks of dry dock? All that crap is going to be floating around in the air, going through the ventilation system, and 2,000 passengers are going to get on board in Seattle. They're going to turn on the air conditioner and try to keep the ship nice and cool as it heads south through the Panama Canal and all that fibrous, toxic stuff is going to be circulated amongst all of them, including the thousand crew members, many of which you don't see because they're down below in the enclosed compartments below deck. They can't get out. They don't even get fresh air unless they go to the back of the ship and, you know, try to breathe out of there. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe it. What's been going on with these people. Uh, I can't believe what's happened to these uh, innocent victims here. I'm really, uh, I'm really uh, uh, stumped by this. Um, you know, Norwegian, uh, their image, it's a fun line, freestyle cruising, eat when you want, all kinds of great restaurants to enjoy yourself with. And uh, the captain on this ship came off like a doofus could barely speak English, it lasted three minutes in front of the passengers, and they basically booed him out of town, powerless to stop any of this, unwilling to do a thing to help the passengers who are suffering from uh, respiratory issues, uh, skin lesions, rashes. They had rashes from this stuff while on board that cruise. They went down to the medical wing. The doctor's treating them down there for the stuff that's going on up here. The captain's doing nothing about it. Uh, just, just defies all logic i uh, i it's a it's a dollar and cents decision to me it's all about cash for norwegian they didn't want to pay an extra week of dry dock time uh, at the dry dock facility and so, so they thought they'd pull a fast one and just do it at on sea we'll just do it at sea international water we can get away with it no one will know <laughs> no one will know yeah if this was 1980 maybe you could get away with it because all we would have had it would have been film camera and the odd Re, you know, recorder, camcorder, but now <clears throat> with smartphones and tablets, these passengers were armed to the teeth with technology, and there are all kinds of photos and videos out on this whole mess. It's unbelievable. Let's see what the other comments are. Uh, see what's going on here. Um, double checking, double checking. Uh, okay, Betsy Lane is here. Hello, plus one in Hamilton. Thomas Arnold, hey, Bruce, big bear checking in. Just got back from a Caribbean cruise on the Eurodam. That's all in America. That must have been great, Thomas. Uh, please tell us about that. How was the food? How was your cabin? How was the itinerary? Iskew Park called sugar coating crap. No matter how much sugar you add, it's still crap. Kathy Butler, Thomas, how was Eurodam? Bruce makes Holland America sound amazing. I love Holland America. I love that cruise life. Had a fantastic cruise on the Oosterdam down the Mexican Riviera. Loved it. First cruise I ever had on a cruise ship. It was fantastic. Uh, Kathy Butler, sketchy Mexico dump. Yeah, eh, very sketchy, isn't it? They wouldn't drop that off in L.A. Oh, no. You can't drop that off in L.A. They won't accept it. Too toxic. Where are you going to put it? It's like radioactive. We're not touching that crap. Are you kidding me? Uh-uh. It's unbelievable. I'm almost surprised they didn't dump it at sea. Uh, with all the nonsense they're pulling off. It's really disturbing. It's so disappointing. Desi Wagner, Thomas, I love Hall America. How was your trip? Tommy eating flammable chemicals and the passengers can't get to the lifeboats. Unbelievable. What was NCL thinking? These passengers need to hire lawyers. I think they are. Uh, uh, Kathy, NC, uh, Norwegian knows you can have a surprise OSHA expect inspection. OSHA inspection. They, that's right. They do know that. They cannot have that stuff on board. They, not a chance. Unbelievable. Iskew Park. My question is, where did the sun put those hundreds of workers? Were they, were they in a bunk? Where did they eat? If they took cruise, cabins means the number of crew to serve the pay and cruisers. Very good point. Good question. Uh, what does OSHA have jurisdiction in international waters? No. No. Just in the United States. Uh, Iskew Park. How much less than uh, norm was the cruise? I, I don't know if it was on sale all that much. Um, uh, I met OSHA at the dock. Uh, well, uh, Kathy, uh, yeah, that's what she meant it, it, at the dock. They, they could have been waiting. Kathy, I saw they had a safety desk in the photos Bruce showed. They knew there were safety issues. Yeah, they took one of the bars. They took one of the bars over, shut it down to the public. And they put signage up, uh, the so-called safety office. You know, that's where all the construction foremen were, the, the bosses of these grunts. 
giving them their marching orders, telling them what to do. They turned that ship into a construction zone. Uh, passengers didn't sign up for a construction cruise. They signed up for a 16-day Panamanian Canal cruise from the brochure that they got, from, from the brochures that have been sent on the emails, from the advertising that's on television, <clears throat> those beautiful videos that Norwegian is famous for, the gorgeous pictures of the ships and the gorgeous pictures of the white sand beaches, the palm trees, the blue turquoise water, the blue sunny sky, never rains, never a hurricane. It's always perfect. <clears throat> Except if you're on this particular cruise, you're, you've got a construction office on this level over here. you got a whole bunch of guys on the deck outside smelling up the place and filth pouring off these machines all over the ship. Uh, people are 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 on the hand on their handrails. They're they're using their hands, showing you on their hands what's on the handrails. This black blue dust with metal metal particles in it, just unforgivable. Absolutely pulling a fast one on these poor passengers. Not right, Peter Heckma. I won't be until the news media picks up. It won't be until the media picks up the story. Then, when re uh, Norwegian realizes that the story is getting out, then maybe the passenger will get better compensation. Yeah, we'll see about this. Uh, Desi Wagner, do the passengers have any way to be compensated? Being an asthmatic, I would be highly concerned about health care costs. Desi, uh, I tell you, it, it it is a scary thought. If you were on any kind of a respirator scenario, uh, there, were, there were passengers on this cruise ship that were taking, in effect, their last cruise. This was the bucket list cruise for a lot of people. And they were in their 70s and their 80s. Uh, I've I've talked or, or, or communicated with people who went with parents. You know, the, the 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 child is in their 40s or 50s, and they took their parents, one or both, on this one time, one time, last cruise ever. And their immune systems are weak as it is. Now they're being exposed to this stuff. And the the uh, the real sad part about, about it is that there were a number of people who were forced out of their cabins, not by the staff, but by the uh, the noxious odors coming into the cabins through the air conditioning vents. The the air is being circulated through the ship, and the sh the air is being picked up from outside, and it's picking up the smell of this the, the, the turpentine and the paint thinners and all the glues and the adhesives that they're using to reattach the decking when they reattach it, all that that odor is coming up with these workers are wearing gas masks, not to die with working with this stuff. The odor of this product went into the vents, came through the air conditioning ducts, into the cabins. And because your cabin is as small as it is, 138 square feet, 180 square feet, within minutes, your cabin is is got such a high particulate matter, you know, per million parts per million matter. There are passengers who could not breathe comfortably, breathe anymore, and the back of their throats were just killing them. Painful. They got out of their cabins into the hallway and then would go to the stairwell and you know desperately try to get outside or to an open area on the ship with a lar larger area to breathe to get that out of their system. Some people were cl close to fainting, like passing out unconscious from this stuff. And here we have seniors who have, you know, very weak immune systems as it is. They're exposed. If they're exposed to one-tenth of that amount, it could really do damage and harm. And there are people going to their doctors now after the cruise is over to get checked out because they don't feel well. Well, I don't feel so good, they're saying. Not not very good at all. Compensation, I, I, I tell you. Uh, if this was the United States, uh, if this was the state of California, uh, Norwegian could be out of business. Uh, they could be sued out of business for that kind of incident. 2,000 victims? Can you imagine? 2,000 victims in the same lawsuit, 10 million a person? Just do the math. It's, it's unimaginable how much money that could, this could cost if it were done in the right jurisdiction. As it is, it's in the court of public opinion right now. It's just unbelievable. Debbie Manuel, I wonder if the captain of the Sun is still employed. Guessing he got the hell out while he had the chance and sure did not tell him about the upcoming trouble. Just hired him three days before the cruise. I read that on this site a couple days ago. I haven't seen anything more about it, but I'm trying to dig out some more information about this. What is it with this captain? Uh, what experience did this guy have? What is the situation? Uh, what, uh, you know, 
is this another little ploy on the cruise line to uh, put a victim in there, a patsy? Like, what is going on? I don't understand it. Uh, Julia uh, Sai is saying, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Julia, for joining me. Uh, it's great to have you here. I think you knew. Kathy Butler, uh, whoa, Debbie, I hadn't heard about that captain. Wonder if the previous captain refused to sail with the unsafe conditions. What if the previous captain quit uh, on the cruise before? You know, the one where where people were getting sick already and he quit, wouldn't take the next cruise. They brought in the Patsy and he did the uh, Panamanian cruise and uh, he found out what kind of a world of hurt he got into. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Dead Boy, Debbie, CNN and others are only reporting about Trump. There is no other news. Canadian channels are the only ones that have everyday news from around the world. Uh, apparently, this story has hit Australian television as of today. It just started today. It'll be interesting to see if other news organizations pick it up. I know it's been covered in the UK. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this spreads. Peter Heckema, health problems may not show up for years to come either. Then what do the passengers do? What about the crew? What about all these uh, Filipinos, Indonesians, and all these third worlders downstairs, all the waiters, all the uh, the room attendants, all of the uh, laundry people downstairs? You know, the laundry that they're doing and handling the laundry that has all this dust on it. Uh, you know, it, it's just, it, it's just, uh, I, I just, I just shake my head at the chain effect, like that, that, the domino effect that's happening here down the line. Uh, it is terrible. Absolutely terrible. When this kind of work is done on a ship, I don't care if it's a cargo vessel or a cruise ship or a private yacht, there shouldn't be anyone on the vessel except the crew that's working the vessel, the professional construction guys who are masked and suited up to be protected from the burns that this chemical can, some of these chemicals can get off, give off. Just having your skin exposed to the air that this stuff is floating around in will give you rashes, burns. That's what passengers are suffering from in their cabins because it came through the ventilation system. It's just, it's just unthinkable what was going on here. Debbie Emanuel, you are only allowed one doozy a week, Bruce, and you already used that up on Sunday. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to do it. I really didn't. Dead Boy Debbie ventilation systems reminds me I have to get my ducts clean. Kathy, true Peter, people are still dying from the stuff they inhaled during 9-11 terror attacks when the towers fell. Exactly. Exactly. That, I'm that's construction dust. That's what I'm talking about. That kind of stuff. It's deadly. Jim Thomas, bet the captain was a toss-away captain and never was good enough to be in that position to start with. Wonder if he got a bonus for his role in all this. Yeah, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? It's just unbelievable. Debbie Emanuel, Kathy Bruce stated early in the week, the info about the new captain. Uh, Kathy Butler, oh, I missed that show. I still haven't had time to go back and watch it. Kathy Butler, see what happens when you miss a show. Laugh out loud. Iskew Park, free hammer and hard hat for every guest. Enjoy. Laugh out loud. Kathy Butler, if you see a safety office on your cruise, get a refund and get the heck off. Get off that cruise. Kathy Butler, wonder if travel insurance would cover if you left. I don't know. I don't know about that, Kathy Butler. My mom has a has COPD and would need emergency breathing treatments if she had sailed on the sun. My goodness. Silo Steve. Hey, Bruce, late but here. Hi, Silo. Kathy Butler, Mexico should also be pissed and investigate the disposal of chemicals. If they ruin their environment, there will be no more tourism dollars and six citizens. You got to wonder how many other ships do this in Ensenada, just south of LA. How much crap is dumped there because it's cheap and easy. No reporting, perhaps. Yeah, makes you got to wonder. Just makes you wonder. Unbelievable. Randy Lucas, Bruce, when you get up close to your camera and with that shirt, you look like Nemo from Finding Nemo. I do. Thank you. <laughs> Kathy Butler, Australians are like, we may fight on the ship, but we won't play with you with nasty construction and chemicals. Laugh up, laugh. <laughs> Silo, after complaint to NCL on the date this past November, my Haven service was not what it should have been. My wife and I each got a $200 onboard credit. Amazed they did anything. 205 days to the bliss. Yeah, you paid a lot more than 200 bucks to be on that haven. I'll tell you that. I know that. Iskew Park, major work on ship has massive venting fans, cover all dust areas, all staff sent to shore or sent away till it's completed. Fire suppression equipment stationed everywhere. There was no fire suppression equipment stationed anywhere on this ship during this work job. Nada. This ship was a floating bomb, ready to go off at a moment's notice. Uh, they were lucky they didn't go through a thunder shower. One bolt of lightning 
sets the whole thing off on the decks. Uh, this stuff, gallons of it, would have just blown right away like a bomb. And then it would have spread across the, half the top of the ship, sealing off half of all exits getting out, leaving the other half to go out, to get out. And maybe a half of those were locked off from the construction crew. Can you see the movie I'm talking about here? I'm talking about a Hollywood movie that would be a great cinema feat. That would be just a catastrophe uh, at sea. It would have happened 100 miles offshore. No one to help anyone anywhere. Uh, if the explosion had happened close enough to the bridge with enough force, it would have knocked the bridge right out. The windows would have been blown in. Everyone on board the, the, the bridge would have been killed instantly. The, the equipment destroyed. No signal to the world. SOS. No SOS signal. No cell phone signal. You're out at sea because they would have knocked out the internet. This ship would have been in the middle of the ocean in the dark of night in a shower, in a storm with no communication to the outside world, burning on the top decks and passengers locked down below. Just think about that. Just, it's a nightmare scenario. And uh, no one brings it up. Like, I, I'm just trying, I'm just sitting, I'm not a na navigational expert or anything like that. I'm not like in the Navy or from, uh, you know, from the cruising industry. I I'm just a guy <laughs> who loves to go on cruise ships. But I'm trying to tell you folks, this domino effect of safety violations, one after the other after the other, could have had killer reproduction uh, uh, ramifications. Killer ramifications. 3,000 people on board, the 2,000 paying customers and the 1,000 innocent workers who had nothing to do with it. You know, they had nothing to do with it. It was all head office. Can you imagine if uh, we're on uh, watching television one day and uh, CNN comes on with Wolf Blitzer? And talks about the fact that uh, communication has been lost with a cruise ship for two days. Nobody knows whatever happened to the Norwegian Sun cruise ship. It left Miami on the whatever day. It went through the Panama Canal. Last known position is an X on the ocean dot. And no one knows what happened to it. Yeah, this happened to it. This could have happened to it. And uh, the crew would have tried to fight the fire. You know, with onboard fire fighting equipment, who knows how much of the power would have been knocked out? You would have had how many people with burns out of uh, over most of their bodies. You don't have the medical facility on board to look after them, and the ship now is drifting, drifting at sea. Because if all the power cuts out, the ship doesn't move. It goes where the current moves it. It's now in the Pacific Current, and wherever the Pacific Current happens to go is where the ship is going to go. So the last known position was here. And it's over here. It's 100 miles away because it's been two days. It's way out of position. Sending the Navy will send planes out to try to find it. They'll try to spot it. And they'll find it. And then three or four days later, they'll get a couple of ships to it. Now it's been five days. At sea. If it hasn't sunk already, if it hasn't sunk, hopefully it wouldn't have sunk. It would just be a floating hulk. But, oh, what a ship of misery this would be. Just an absolute ship of misery. Uh, I... You remember the poop cruise, the Carnival um, Triumph, where the uh, engine fire took place, and then the all the systems were off, including the toilets, and the passengers called it the poop cruise for five days. The Navy was taking helicopters from aircraft carriers and dropping bottles of water onto a cruise ship with sandwiches, spam sandwiches, and uh, uh, to, uh, what was it, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to feed the passengers and crew on board the ship because everything in the freezers rotted out, no power, no, no power to run a stove, can't make coffee, can't run the water purifi purification systems. They're all down. Uh, what a mess that cruise was. What a disaster for Carnival that was. But there wasn't a loss of life. Thank God for that. On this scenario, a massive explosion on, on the deck of that cruise ship for whatever reason, uh, whatever whatever would have caused it with this highly flammable amount of chemicals lining the entire side of the deck. There were there was pallet after pallet after pallet of this stuff lining the side of the deck for probably 250 feet. You have a 250-foot-long 250 bomb on a 900-foot-long cruise ship. Do the math on that one. Uh, 
it, you, the passengers and the, the human beings lose, <laughs> the bomb wins, and uh, we've got carnage. We've got untold carnage uh, at the, in the high seas. It's just, it's just unthinkable what what Norwegian was doing. They, they've they've not talked about it. They don't want to talk about it. No reporter is going after these guys for whatever reason. Uh, you know, other stories juicier out there. But this one here could have been a catastrophe like no other catastrophe. Hollywood, let's write us a script because uh, it's been made for us. It's been put together by Car uh, by Norve Norwegian. Just hand it to you on a silver platter. It's unbelievable. Uh, just terrible. Just terrible. Uh, any more comments? Um, uh, let's see here. Shaveen first. Hi, y'all. I have asthma too, and I've been doing breathing treatments all week just from the high pollen. I would probably die on that ship. Bob Hollis, it'll be interesting to see who the captain is when it comes out of dry dock. Kathy Butler, oh my God, now I'm seeing Nemo. <laughs> Nemo. Uh, Kathy Butler is, is seeing a little fishies here. Jim Thomas is sending me $5. Keep up the fight for those poor passengers. Thank you, Jim Thomas, so much. I really appreciate your help, folks. Randy Lucas, you're welcome for the visual, folks. Uh, Desi Wagner, me too, Kathy. I see it. Nemo, Nemo. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, Poseidon Adventure is Q Park. It's Poseidon Adventure. Debbie Manuel. Yeah, Jim, all super chatters today. George McCrower, too much domino effect. Floating Hulk, fear mongering without enough facts. I'm out of here. <laughs> Goodbye, George. You got to go, man. You're just never happy with what I'm doing. Uh, sorry, George. Uh, what are you going to do? I, I just am not technical enough for you. I don't know. I just call it as I seize it. And what I seize is ugly. I see ugly stuff. And uh, who knew? Who knew the poop cruise would become what it was from one effect after another effect after another effect? But after six days, it wasn't a fun story anymore. It started off as a fun story on CNN. Cruise ship at sea, floating, vengeance are out. Oh, well, yeah. And then everything else happened and everything else happened. Thank God they got that ship back to shore in six days uh, to, uh, to uh, save people. Because I would bet you had the Triumph not been back to shore, uh, within a couple of days, uh, people would have started getting violently ill because you would have had uh, all the uh, the diseases, the noroviruses and everything, all that poop on that uh, cruise. Oh, people couldn't wash their hands. I mean, it was just, oh, it was awful. Just awful. Uh, anyway, uh, oh, my God, Kathy's saying Bruce is spinning an absolute horror story. needs to go into writing screenplays. Uh, Randy is saying, we'll do, Jim. Silo, don't let the door hit you. Uh, Randy Lucas, okay, Bruce, time to cut back on the chocolate cake, buddy. <laughs> Kathy Butler, George, he's just saying how lucky everyone is, and NCL needs to realize the bullets that were dodged was far more than inconvenience. It was far more than inconvenience. One angry bananas here. Hi, Bruce. It wouldn't have been CNN because, like Deb and uh, like Deb Boy Debbie says, U.S. is too busy reporting on Trump. You would hear on Canadian media first. Looks like Norwegian Cruise Line didn't learn from the Costa Concordia. Yeah, how about that little story? You know, one little thing led to another. 32 people dead. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, uh, dead boy Debbie Frank, uh, J. Uh, Del Rio is the president and chief executive officer of Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings Limited, comprised of Norwegian Cruise Line, Oceana Cruises, and Region 7 Seas Cruises. That is correct, George McCrower. I never said or implied inconvenience. That's true, George. You never did. Not saying you did. It's okay. Uh, Kathy Butler, don't get me started on CNN. Oh, my God. Angry banana. That's an awesome name. Uh, Kathy Butler, true, George. I was referring to NCL letter to the passengers, and that's exactly what they did. They called it an inconvenience. They did not apologize. They've not apologized, uh, and they are not giving an offer that is satisfactory to for this mess. You're describing what could have happened uh, to the Titanic. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, one angry banana. Whoops, should have said hi, Nemo. Thanks, Butler, because I can be an angry because I could be an angry banana. <laughs> Oh, folks, I try to keep it light, as you know. Uh, I do the best I can. Uh, but, you know, when you see 2,000 people, um, innocent people being taken advantage of like that and being treated like that by a huge corporation, um, that to me is just an unforgivable uh, stunt. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm uh, I'm sorry if, uh, if I offend anyone. It's not my intention. Uh, but I got to tell you, uh, <laughs> you look at uh, you know you look at one thing and go, oh, you know, no, no big deal. Well, things happen, and disasters uh, always start with just one little thing. Uh, there's here in Canada, we had a disaster in Quebec about uh, four or five years ago, 
in a town called uh, Lac Megantic. It's a small town in Quebec. Um, had a rail line running through town, uh, like most towns do, of course. Um, and uh, about five miles out of town, if that. I don't even know how far out of town. Near the top of a hill was a train uh, that had pulled up, and the conductor uh, was getting a mandatory break from a shift. I'm not sure if another conductor was going to take over. I don't know how the thing worked. But the conductor uh, left the, uh, the uh, cab of the locomotive, and he had forgotten or had not realized that the air brakes were not set properly for the train. And uh, the train began to roll down the hill, ever so slowly, ever so slightly, but down the hill it began to roll. And on the bottom of the hill is the town of Lac Megantic. Not sure how many people, four or 500 people, I'm not even sure. And I, I, I want to say it was like a Saturday night. It was like an, it was an evening, a weekend evening, and a whole bunch of the folks are downtown in the local bars and saloons having a, you know, what, doing what you do on a Saturday night. And uh, unbeknownst to them, there was this train with no one on it coming down the hill, just coming down the hill, three miles an hour, four miles an hour, five miles an hour, for a mile or two, quite a ways. And the train was going quicker and quicker and quicker. And what no one realized uh, in the town was that this uh, train was coming down this track, coming into the middle of the town, where it would dislocate off the tracks. These The cars on the train were going to come off the tracks. And the cars on the train would now fall all over the place. But by the time the train would get down to the middle of town, it was going at a higher rate of speed than uh, should have been than it should have been going. And what kind of rail cars are we talking about? Rail cars full of oil, oil, oil tankers. The entire train was an oil tanker train, rolling down the hill at about eleven in the evening, and coming down to Middletown at probably thirty miles an hour, and coming through all the switches. And who is going to expect? Who could possibly expect? a train to be rolling through town in the middle of the night backwards from the top of the hill way down a couple miles away out of town. Uh, and then all these cars dislodging one after the other. And then boom, the bomb went off and they all went, all the cars went, not, not only one rail car went, all the oil rail cars went, the ones that got knocked off the tracks and the ones that were still on the tracks as the rest of the train came plowing into town and they did not find bodies. They found a lot of dead people, but they didn't find a lot of the others. Never found nothing left because the entire downtown core of this town was incinerated. Firefighters couldn't get to the middle of town for days because they were barely able to hold the fire from spreading out into the forest around the town. A complete disaster, a complete, you know, negligence, you name it. One thing after the other, after the other, after the other took place. And here we have a moving vessel, <laughs> a moving vessel going through ocean waters, <laughs> you know, 20 odd, 20 odd knots, 22 knots, top speed. You could have hit a couple of good waves, um, could have gone through a slight shower with an, a lucky, a lucky light, lightning strike, just one bite, fluky lightning strike and kapow. The whole front half of the ship could have exploded. I don't know if it, the explosion would have been devastating enough to reach below deck or not. I don't know if it would have caught any kind of fuel line of any sort. I don't know. Could it have created a fireball that could have penetrated through the bridge and through the, the Lido deck and down the halls, uh, the passenger halls, and created a fire 400 feet long across the entire width of the deck, ship, you know, across the entire width of the ship, two or three decks high on the top end. Yes, it could have done that. It could have. I'm not making, am I making this stuff up? Maybe. But am I talking about the possibilities? I think I am. And am I, would I rather be safe than sorry? Yeah, I would rather be safe than sorry. I don't think you should be using those kinds of chemicals on a booked ship with passengers on it. This is dry dock stuff. This is where you do it on dry dock. You don't even let the ship sit in water when you're doing this work. You put it into a dock, you drain the water, 
The ship is sitting on a pedestal and you've got fire suppression equipment all around that unit and on board the ship. And now you strip the deck. And now you handle these noxious chemicals, highly flammable. Now you do it with trained professionals, with firefighters at the ready. But on the open ocean, on the open seas, with women, children, and seniors, are you out of your minds? You're not thinking. You're just not, you're just not getting it. And it's, is it the almighty, the almighty dollar that's leading the charge? Could be. Could be. Call me, uh, you know, call me an exaggerator if you want. Uh, I'm just saying, hey. Things happen. One little thing happens, and the next little thing, and the next little thing. This ship was in no place to get help from anyone in any way, shape, or form at all. That fire would have raged unchecked for days, and it would have permeated and melted decks. Melted decks. That's what would happen. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, it's sad. It's just sad. It's a horror story. Uh, and I'm uh, I'm sorry to have to repeat it, but I've got to get the message out. It's it. This is what these passengers were exposed to, unknowing passengers, unbelievable. Um, yeah, unbelievable. Okay, let's see who else is uh, coming here because I've had I've had to review my uh, messages. I'm sorry, folks. I'm just trying to catch up with where I left off, and I keep touching the wrong button, and I keep uh, losing my place, and I don't know how to un 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 unlose my place. <laughs> and so you have to bear with me while I uh, sign back in and get my chats back. And I'm just going to come back to where we left off. I just noticed another super chat. And thank you so much again, you people. You're wonderful today. Absolutely wonderful today. Uh, George uh, said, never implied inconvenience. I agree with you, George. Um, here we go. Uh, <laughs> Silo, my bliss cruise ends November the 3rd. The, that day, <clears throat> it starts a Panama Canal cruise to Miami. Uh, she, she'll, she will have been in service six months. I hope that one goes fine. I, I'm hoping it will too. Bill Shoup is here. Bill, put this towards your first <laughs> Bill Shoup sent me $6, $5, sorry, sent me $5. And he says, put this towards your first tank of gas for that RV of yours. Uh, Bill was not too pleased with me today. Uh, Bill, uh, I have to confess, Bill, I'm, 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 I'm coming clean with everybody. <laughs> Uh, Bill wrote me a little note. <laughs> well, he wrote me a couple of notes. And uh, Bill was a little ticked. <laughs> he was kind of ticked that I sort of went on and on with this RV story on April the 1st. Sunday, April the 1st. Uh, he was a little ticked I went on with this story. And he stuck around for it. <laughs> he didn't like the ending. He, he, he liked the first 50 minutes, but he didn't like the last 10 he found the last 10 minutes a little disturbing and uh, a little, he was a little a little upset and he let me know about it, uh, thinking it's an hour he'll never get back. <laughs> and yet, and yet the man is sending me a super chat today uh, for $5 and uh, that's an extra special super chat. I really appreciate that. <laughs> And uh, what can I say? Uh, you know, April the 1st, things happen. Um, Jim Jim Thomas saying solo, fingers are crossed for you and your cruise. Cam Wilson, yay, you're still alive. Cam Wilson, hey, everybody. Silo, I'm not going on the Panama cruise. <laughs> Debbie Manuel, hi, Cam. Kathy Butler, I'm sure the bliss will be wonderful. Debbie is also saying quite the payday today. Yahoo. Jim Thomas, hey, Cam. Uh, WTG Bill. Way to go, Bill, from Kathy Butler. Cam Wilson, hola, Debbie, hola, Jim. Jim Thomas is, is happy. Iskew Park, all we need to scare future travelers. It's the only way to make the greedy corporates pay when, we're the, when, they're the, when we are the rats in their cages. Iskew Park, give me his address, Bruce, and I'll send him crap whether his way. And it's all good, Bruce. It's all good, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> Anyway, I uh, I uh, had to get that off my chest today. I feel for these folks on this on this Facebook page. They are sharing their stories with each other. They're connecting with each other. They're seeking help. They're seeking uh, assistance. They're in desperate need of it. They need our support. They deserve our support. Uh, they've uh, they've uh, paid a terrible price. Uh, and I I am doing my part uh, to let get the story out. I think the story should get out. I would appreciate it if all of you uh, would please uh, share my videos regarding this whole episode. Uh, share these videos on uh, on Facebook to all your friends and connections. 
Uh, if you can share this uh, information through through your uh, through uh, Instagram or any other way to get the story out, uh, I would really appreciate it. Uh, I think it has to be told, and I think it has to spread out to the big media. I really do. I think these corporations, these massive cruise companies, have got to get it in their heads that there are certain things that are not to be done. And I really am wondering um, what can be done uh, to regulate this. Uh, I, I don't know if there's an entity, an organization that can grab Norwegian, a company like that, and say, hey, wake up. What are you doing? Uh, there have got to be, I, I would think that certain rules have been broken here, laws, conventions, but I, I don't know. I'm not an expert in maritime law. I'm not a lawyer. Um, just a guy that loves to go on cruises and loves to get a great deal on a cruise if I can find one and just enjoy it and not, uh, not be caught up in this kind of a nightmare scenario. I pray I'm never part of anything like this. I will admit I was on a princess cruise out of LA that was doing some rent over. They were doing some rent over, rent out work. They were taking a restaurant and they were, they were doing some adjustments to it, but they had it all cordoned off with plastic tarp and, you know, no, no, no issues and, and no noise. Uh, it was in effect, it was the installation of some kitchen equipment that was being done. And it was being done as quietly as possible without interfering with our affairs and our activities. And we didn't need hard hats. We didn't need gas masks or anything like that. And there were nothing, there was nothing flammable about on the decks or anything like that. And so you can forgive a cruise line for that, for, fair enough. But this kind of work that's being done here on the Norwegian Sun, this is dry dock work. This is dry dock work that needs to be on the outdoors. It's on a deck, obviously, the outside decks. Uh, it needs ventilation, this is the air, but it needs protection for the workers and it should have protection for anyone around those workers. And there was no protection for the bathing suit wearing men, women, and children of this cruise. That is where they've dropped the ball badly. They put people's lives in danger unnecessarily and the ramifications and the, the effects could have been absolutely devastating. And I'm really, uh, really bummed about it. And as you can tell, I'm upset for these people. It's just not right. And I love talking about cruise ships and good times on a cruise. I'm going to shut this down here. I want to say thank you for everyone who's given me thumbs ups. If, if, if those of you give me thumbs ups today, thank you for the thumbs ups on this telecast. I really want to say thank you to the super chatters today. Man, have you guys come through today. I am blown away. I also want to say a special hello to Stephen. Stephen today sent me a PayPal uh, donation, and I contacted him and said, Stephen, uh, tell me, you sent me $10. Can I uh, send you a, uh, can I send you a uh, medallion? Can I send you a necklace for your contribution? And uh, Steve said, no, thank you, sir. Uh, this is a donation from me to you for the job you're doing. I really appreciate your work. And I guess he heard that I had mentioned that uh, you can send me a donation through my PayPal connection on my homepage. And he did. And I had no idea it was coming. It just showed up and I contacted him immediately. Thank you for that. All of you today on my channel for Super Chats, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate it. It really helps because I'm uh, I'm not being paid by YouTube to rant away today. <laughs> okay, so that's it. I'm going to be on again. Uh, it's now 6.16 Eastern time. One hour and 44 minutes from now, I will be on this channel for my 8 o'clock primetime show. And I promise you it'll be a lot more fun than this one because we are going to play travel trivia tonight. Um, I got a couple of trivia. I got several trivia questions waiting all teed up, ready to go, and I'm going to put you guys to work to see uh, if you can answer some of these questions that I got lined up here. Uh, it's kind of fun, and if you, you want something a little lighter tonight, uh, join in at 8 o'clock Eastern. Catch Bruce with Traveling with Bruce because it's Travel Trivia Night, Thursday night, 8 o'clock. Thank you, everyone, for uh, watching and coming in. It was a, a great crowd. I really appreciate all of you here. And all of you on the Facebook page uh, for the Panama Cruise, I'm in your corner. I'm pulling for you guys. And anything I can do to help, just let me know. Uh, I will spread the word. Anything the world needs to know that you know that we haven't said yet, tell me. 
I will pass it on. Absolutely. I'm live six days a week and I'm more than happy to let the world in on it because this is a story that should be told, shared and exposed to all because it's unforgivable. Thanks again for joining me. Everyone is saying goodbye. See you guys at eight o'clock Eastern time. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today on my YouTube channel, Traveling with Bruce. We'll see you at eight o'clock tonight for the primetime show. Travel trivia is next. Thanks again and goodbye for now.